So, this video was a long time in coming. Uh, we covered the Arrow probably close to a month ago now, and this is supposed to be the video that goes with that. Unfortunately, if you're not living up here in the northeastern U.S., uh, you don't know, but it's been freezing, freezing cold. Uh, we finally started to get a, a bit of a, a break in the weather, but holy cow, it was icy, frigid cold out, like literally as cold as Siberia. And uh, what was interesting is every time I tried to film the last part of this video outside, which is where I was setting up the salmon ladder, it was so cold that it would kill the battery on the camera so I wouldn't be able to film it. Uh, I tried to film as quickly as possible, but literally the, the camera was just going down in like 10, 15, 20 seconds. It was just not possible. So we did a couple other videos in the meantime. Uh, then it finally got warm enough to film, but then it was raining, like a lot, not just a little. Normally I'm okay with, you know, set up an umbrella for the camera and we're all good, but it was raining a lot. And I didn't really feel like being outside working with power tools and filming with my camera and pouring rain. So uh, finally, we had a break this past Sunday. Uh, it wasn't raining, it was still pretty cold, it actually got down below freezing again. And if you watch in the video in the later parts, you can actually see it's snowing a little bit. But it's warm enough that the camera doesn't die instantly, and uh, there is no rain, so I got a chance to finish it, and here it is finally for you, the salmon ladder that Mother Nature didn't want to happen. So for the rungs of the salmon ladder, we're going to use 2x4s. Um, I've got some 2x4s left over from a uh, trebuchet that my friend Stefan actually built for a... Uh, pumpkin lunching competition we had in my backyard back in October. Uh, he won, by the way. Um, when he was done, he said, I really want to transport all this lumber home so you can have it and do with it what you will. So it's slowly becoming Ninja Warrior obstacles in my backyard, one piece at a time. Um, so these are actually uh, uh, some of the base from his trebuchet, and uh, we're going to cut these up today to make the rungs for the salmon ladder. Now the salmon ladder, we're going to want five steps. I'm designing it to have five steps up and down. So uh, I obviously want five sets of rungs, so we need five pairs. Um, we're going to get 10 inch lengths out of the 2x4 uh, here. So I'm going to mark that off. And then uh, to save time, I'm actually going to cut both 2x4s at the same time. So I only have to make five cuts total. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make my straight line with my level here so I can be sure I'm on. And then uh, to grab my circular saw and cut it out. Now for the uprights for the salmon ladder, what the 2x4s uh, are going to attach to, I've got a 2x8 pressure treated uh, a 12 foot length of wood here. And uh, again, I want five rungs and the rungs are going to be spaced a foot apart. So what I want here is I want to measure out six feet. So I'm just going to cut the sucker in half and uh, Now, for the uprights for the salmon ladder, what the uh, rungs are going to attach to, uh, I've just got a 12 foot long length 2x8 pine. Um, this is pressure treated, so it'll help hold up a little better outside, because it's going to be built outdoors, obviously. Can't fit this thing in my house. Uh, now, like I said, it's a 2x8 by 12, and since we want a 5 foot, uh, five rung salmon ladder, uh, we're going to place each rung a foot apart, and I'm actually just going to cut this thing in half, so i got 6 feet total, so i got a little overhang on the ends to help secure it. 
Um, so we're going to mark that six foot line right here. And then we're going to go ahead and cut it in half. Now you can see here I sort of laid out the rungs for my salmon ladder and I just eyeballed them here. This is not an actual measurement yet. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, all five rungs are going to fit pretty well and that my measurements on the hole were not bad. Um, so it looks pretty good to me. Now again, I want a three inch overhang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to measure out three inches on my rung there. Now this is going to be the top edge of the rung. So I'm going to fit it and I'm going to line up that inch marker with the edge of the uh, board here. Now. I have been looking online for measurements and standardized sizes and stuff like that for the uh, the actual Salmon Ladder and Ninja Warrior, and I haven't actually been able to find any. I'm going to assume it's something like a 45 degree angle, um, and uh, the, the the deal is it's, it really doesn't have to be exact. You just need what you need for the, the bar to hook onto to really start to work the muscles and train the exercise. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and line up my 3 inch marker, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm going to go ahead and line up the back corner here, and I'm going to go ahead and get another measurement right here, down where the lower side meets up with the uh, support brace here. Alright, so now, top side, I've got about 3 inches, and bottom side, it looks like we're looking at about 5 and a quarter. All right, so now I can measure out my sizes on all my other crossbars here, and uh, I don't have to actually line every single one of them up on the board to measure them. I can just go ahead and do them all in one go. So I've got my marker here. I'm going to lay out all five rungs for this side, and I'm make sure they're lined up properly on the end that's going to be jutting off of my support. And I'm going to take my straight edge line it up with that measurement and then we're just going to do a line straight across the whole way. Bada boom. And then we're going to flip them over. And we're going to do the same thing with our top side measurement. Line up my straight edge and boom, same deal. Throw a line across the hallway. There we go. See, now you can go ahead and draw on the board itself, you know, like like uh, uh, get a triangle or a, a square and uh, measure out an actual 45 degree angle and draw full outlines. But honestly, for our purposes, these two markers are going to help us line things up properly. Now, next thing I want to do is measure out where my rungs are going to go. Now this, the general consensus is they go about a foot apart. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and line up my lines again so I get my angle correct. All right, and uh, I probably want to start pretty close to the end here. I want to leave enough room on the base of the board on this end to be able to anchor it into the support. I'm going to be supporting this on a tree, um, but I want to still get this pretty close to the bottom because where I measure the board from is going to be about where the height starts at. So here we go. I've gone ahead and I'm going to just line up and mark off where the top edge of the rung is going to be because that's where the bar is going to rest. And then I'm just going to measure out one foot increments from there. All right, so I'm going to line up. There we go. And there's my one foot mark. And again, I want to eyeball this, make sure everything looks correct. It's always best, they say measure twice, cut once. Generally, measure twice before you do anything with power tool. Cut it, drill it, you know, secure it, whatever you want to do. It's a lot easier to do it right the first time than it is to undo it and do it again. Now looking there, I lined up my lines and that's looking pretty good. And again, I want to just double check, make sure everything's correct. Yep, that's about three inches. All right, about three inches. There we go. And uh, we're looking at a foot apart, foot worth of distance from the top of this rung to the top of this rung. Yep, we are pretty much spot on there. All right, so now I'm confident with that one foot measure. I'm going to go ahead and just check off the next three rungs after that. So now my rungs are marked off. One last time, 
I'm going to set them out and make sure everything looks okay. So I'm going to line that one up. Next one goes here. Next one goes there. There. And there. That looks pretty good. And I even got some space on the end. If I ever want to add an extra rung, looks like I got enough space up on that end to do so. All right, so I know my measurements are good. I know I'm solid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my drill. And I'm going to pre-drill some anchor holes for each one of these. I went and got some, you want some, uh, I got screws from the local hardware store. And uh, to secure the 2x4s to the 2x8, I got some 3-inch prime guard exterior screws. And then to secure the actual supports to the tree, I got some 3 half inches to go ahead and get the depth into the tree because I want to make sure those supports are nice and rock solid. So, now I got a drill, and uh, I got my rungs here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill four holes in each of these rungs. Um, pre-drilling, first of all, makes it easier to drive the screw in, obviously, and it also makes it uh, so you stand less of a chance of splitting the wood. I'm probably not going to end up coming close to splitting the wood even with that pre-drilling, but it really makes everything go a bit smoother. And I'm putting four into each one because I want these to be well secured because obviously these can be supporting my body weight with quite a bit of lateral force on them. So I want lots of metal holding me onto the support so I don't fall on my butt when I'm trying to do this. So now I want to go ahead and line up one more time. Make sure everything looks correct. We're solid there. We're solid there. Go ahead and drop in my first screw. And there we go, first rung done. Nice and secure, nice and solid. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that five times and uh, we'll move on to our next support. Now, I'm just about done with this side here. The last thing I wanna do is just uh, take one of my rungs from the other side that we're about to do and line it up with the master copy here and just make sure I got my markings in the same spot. Because again, we want both sides to be identical just facing each other. Um, now, I want to go ahead and grab my tape measure and double check my measurements to make sure we're still solid on that. Let's see, three inches, and let's see, about five and a quarter. Cool. Good deal. So now I want to do the same thing I did before, line up my straight edge. Mark all the way across the top, flip it over, again line up from the front here, as this is the side that's going to be uh, the part that the bar rests on, that's the side we want to be the same size, and then we're going to go ahead, line up here, and boom. Got my markings for the next side. Now, the tricky thing about the other side here is that we want it to be mirror image. If I do, this is my second support here, if I do them all the same side, what's going to happen is when I stick this up in the supports, the bars are going to be, this side of the bar is going to be against the supports or it's going to be outside the supports. It's not going to line up properly. So what I want to do is I want to mirror image like that. So these are going to go like so going all the way up so that when I flip this over it'll mirror it and these will go on the inside of two trees alright so the trees will be attaching on this side of the braces these side of the sports here and uh, because of that I obviously don't want my rungs on that side I want my rungs inside the tree not outside so I check my measurement to make sure that my bars line up in the same spot we're looking at eleven and a quarter so I want to go ahead and make sure that my first bar on this side also comes in at 11 and a quarter. Okay, so I want to go ahead and check that off. Make 
sure we're at the right height there. Boom. And just eyeball that, make sure it looks correct. Yep, that's good. So, now I'm going to measure out my, four, my one foot increments going up from here again, pre-drill and repeat the whole thing all over again. So, got all my rungs screwed in there. Um, but remember I said measure twice, cut one, splotty blah, power tools, that whole extra I gave? I realized that in fact these two rungs, the first two, are 10 inches apart, not a foot apart like the rest of the rungs are. Whoops. So uh, that's the beginner step there, and then the rest are at the one foot mark. I could go ahead and uh, unattach these and move them two inches lower. I got the room for that, but honestly I don't care that much. That two inch difference is in the end of the world, and it will still serve its purpose as is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, drill some holes in the base here. And we're going to drill some holes up at the top there. And uh, maybe a couple running down the middle here too, just to prep it for putting into the tree. And then we're also going to go ahead and set some screws in at the beginning here at the base so that we can go ahead and tack it in real quick when we get outside because we're going to be working on a ladder. It's also going to be very, very cold out there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, now I've sank my three and a half inch screws into the bases here. Uh, so we can go ahead and real quickly tack those in when we get outside. Um, you can see the rest of the uh, same ladder is about ready to rock. Now we are venturing out into the cold white north. So uh, I want to be able to work as quickly as possible while I'm out there. That's why I'm getting everything prepped. Uh, I'm going to bring out my three and a half inch screws. Obviously you're going to need a ladder, my level, uh, the bar I'm going to use for the salmon ladder, and my drill. So uh, here we go. Okay. So, for the past couple of weeks I've been trying to film this, but it's been so cold out that the battery on my camera literally dies. Like, it's so cold that the freezing air kills the battery on my, on my video camera. So, um, we're outside. It's still cold, but it's not like so cold it kills my camera. But we're still going to be brief because it's cold. Um, so, looking up the hill here, this is where my salmon ladder is going to be. Now, what didn't happen, what you didn't see on camera, uh, what happened here is I put two blocks on the tree. What I did with, on the trees, what I do is I measured my height, like how high I can reach to. And even though it doesn't look level because of the hill there, those are actually pretty level. Um, so I measured the height I can reach to as the starting point for the ladder. And uh, I set those blocks at that height. I, I dropped one in and I grabbed a level and I leveled out the block. That's the one on the uh, left side here. I leveled that one out independently. And then uh, what I did was I took my bar that I'm going to use here and I held it on that and I reached it out to the other tree and uh, raised and lowered the end until it was level and that's where I dropped in the other block. Those blocks are going to be my resting point for the, uh, the, other, uh, uh, for the actual salmon ladder rungs. Now they're not going to be structural, they're just kind of there to help me get them up there and make sure they're level. That way I'm not trying to balance a giant huge, you know, two by 10, wow, I'm trying to level it out and blah, 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 it'll make it a lot easier. So I got those up on there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get up the boards now. All right, so I got the first set of rungs up on the tree here. Uh, as you can see, I had to stand on the very top step of the ladder that says this is not a step. That was fun, um, but it's up there. Um, now, if you look on the side here, you can see there is a gap between the bottom and the top. I anchored it at the top and I anchored it at the bottom. Um, when it's a little warmer out, I'm probably going to shove an extra piece of 2x4 in the middle there and uh, go ahead and reinforce that. But uh, right now it should serve for our purposes. Just for a little security, I'll add that later. So I got the first strut up, but here's the second one. And here's the problem. If you line them up straight, you can see how the wood's just kind of barely poking out past the tree there. That means that the uh, actual bar for the salmon ladder will not really fit on the rungs. The tree keeps it out. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and get a couple of pieces of 2x4 and uh, build a little shelf for it to sit on that juts out from the tree a bit. So I'm going to grab those and uh, get that underway. All right, so I'm back to the workshop for a bit and uh, built up a couple of braces to go ahead and stick this sucker onto the tree. And it's just some old 2x4 scraps and some old 2x8 scraps I had lying around. And uh, just did a nice little angle brace there. Toenailed that in on the bottom there. And then uh, stuck one on the top as well. 
Da -da -da -da. Second rung set. I actually kind of overestimated the size I needed for the uh, supports, but that's okay. Maybe we'll, we'll build something cool on the backside later. Um, gotta admit, getting that sucker up was probably as much of a workout as actually using this thing is gonna be. But you know what? Even though I'm juiced, I gotta give this thing a shot for the first time anyway. So here goes. Sorry we didn't actually get to doing the salmon ladder today. I was honestly just completely exhausted after that construction. It was a lot more involved than I thought it was going to be. Uh, additionally, I didn't have any kind of protective padding down to the ground. There's lots of ice and rocks out there right now, so if I did beef, uh, it could be extraordinarily bad for me, and I don't really feel like you know, putting myself at risk like that. But I promise you, there will be a salmon ladder tutorial video soon just to show you how to actually do the thing. Um, until then, here's some other videos to check out. Uh, if you liked the video, please like it and subscribe below. Uh, as usual, live boldly, change the world, and continue to be awesome.